Yes, please, please, let's go. Boy, I'm in the mood for a cheeseburger. No, we gotta go to the soup place. What soup place? Uh, there's a soup stand. Kramer's been going there. He's always raving. I finally got a chance to go there the other day, and I tell you this, you will be stunned. Stunned by soup? You can't eat this soup standing up. Your knees buckle. Huh? All right, let's go. Come on. There's only one caveat. The guy who runs the place is a little temperamental, especially about the ordering procedure. He's secretly referred to as the soup Nazi. Why? What happens if you don't order right? He yells and you don't get your soup. Just follow the ordering procedure and you will be fine. All right, all right. Let's, let's go over that again. All right. As you walk in the place, move immediately to your right. Okay, the main thing is to keep the line moving. Right, so you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So, right. But it's very important not to embellish on your order. No extraneous comments. No questions. No compliments. Oh, boy, I'm really scared. Elaine! <laughs> Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. We didn't get any bread. Just forget it, let it go. Um, excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> No soup for you! <laughs> what did you go up there to heckle her for? Because she came down to the club and heckled me. I give her a taste of her own medicine. Oh, yeah! You gave her a taste of medicine, all right. Well, I didn't want her to have an accident. What accident? Well, after he heckled Toby, she got so upset, she ran out of the building, and a street sweeper ran over her foot and severed her pinky toe. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, then after the ambulance left, I found the toe. So I put it in a Cracker Jack box, filled it with ice, and took off for the hospital. What? You ran? No, I jumped on the bus. I told the driver, I got a toe here, buddy. Step on it. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. Then, all of a sudden, this guy pulls out a gun. Well, I knew any delay's gonna cost her her pinky toe. So I got out of the seat and I started walking towards him. He says, where do you think you're going, Cracker Jack? I says, well, I got a little prize for you, buddy. Plow, plow, yeah. Knocked him out cold. How could you do that? Yeah, then everybody is screaming. Because the driver, he's passed out because of all the commotion. The bus is out of control. So I grab him by the collar, I take him out of the seat, I get behind the wheel, now I'm driving the bus. You're Batman. Yeah, yeah, I am Batman. Then the mugger, he comes to and he starts choking me. So I'm fighting him off with one hand and I kept driving the bus with the other, you know? Then I managed to open up the door and I kicked him out the door, you know, with my foot, you know, at the next stop. You kept making all the stops? <laughs> well, people kept ringing the bell. Well, what, what, what about the toe? What happened to the toe? Well, I am happy to say that the little guy is back in place at the end of the line. <laughs> You did all this for a pinky toe? Well, it's a valuable appendage. Well, I got gonorrhea. That seems about right. That's what they gave me. They? The government? No, no. He's pretending he's got gonorrhea so med students can diagnose it. And it's a waste of my talent. It's just a little burning. Uh, Mickey, he got bacterial meningitis. You know, well, I guess there are no small diseases, only small actors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's it for me! <laughs> we got everybody! What was that? What was that? Showmanship. George is trying to get out on a high note. Is he 
body, showmanship. Maybe that's what my gonorrhea is missing. Yes, step into that spotlight and belt that gonorrhea out to the back row. Yes, yes, I will. I'm gonna make people feel my gonorrhea and feel the gonorrhea in themselves. And are you experiencing any discomfort? Just a little burning during urination. Okay. Any other pain? The haunting memories of lost love. <laughs> May I? Lights. <laughs> Our eyes met across the crowded hat store. I a customer and she a coquettish haberdasher. <laughs> I pursued, and she withdrew, and then she pursued, and I withdrew, and, and so we danced, and I burned for her, much like the burning during urination that I would experience soon afterwards. Gonorrhea! Gonorrhea! <laughs> this point, she's under the impression that you're a, uh, a what? A marine biologist. Your parents must be so proud of you, George. Oh, they're busting. <laughs> what are all these people doing over there? What's going on over here? There's a beached whale. She's dying. Is anyone here a marine biologist? the whale, George, for me. <laughs> so I started to walk into the water. I won't lie to you, boys. I was terrified. But I pressed on, and as I made my way past the breakers, a strange calm came over me. I, I don't know if it was divine intervention or the kinship of all living things, but I tell you, Jerry, at that moment, I was a marine biologist. George, I've just been reading this thing in the paper. It's unbelievable. I know, I was just telling the story. Well, come on, George, finish the story. The sea was angry that day, my friends. Like an old man trying to send back soup in a deli. I got about 50 feet out and suddenly the great beast appeared before me. I tell you, he was 10 stories high if he was afoot. As if sensing my presence, he let out a great bellow. I said, easy, big fella. And then, as I watched him struggling, I realized that something was obstructing its breathing. From where I was standing, I could see directly into the eye of the great fish. Mammal. Whatever. <laughs> hey, well, what did you do next? Well, then, from out of nowhere, a huge tidal wave lifted me, tossed me like a cork, and I found myself right on top of him, face to face with the blowhole. I, I, I could barely see from the waves crashing down upon me, but I knew something was there. So I reached my hand in, felt around, and... Pulled out the obstruction. <laughs> what is that, a title list? <laughs> a hole in one, huh? It's all happening. What's happening? The coffee table book. It's a go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard all about it. You know what this means? I'm starting the book tour. First stop, Regis and Kathy Lee. Please. 
Young guy, he's got a new book coming out, and it's about, and this is the best part. I love it. It's this. a coffee table book about coffee tables. Yeah. Is huh? that clever? Huh? Well, I nice. think that is so clever. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Did you get to meet him backstage? I did. I, I mean, he looks like a fun room. guy, doesn't he? I, I love his hair. Yeah. Oh, I do, too. This guy could be a little boncos, really. <laughs> anyway, Breathe. if you will, would you please welcome Kramer. table book oh. about coffee table. Yeah. Where'd you come up with this idea? Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Regis, uh, actually, this is a true story. I, uh, I was skiing at the time. You know, when I'm skiing, yeah. Kramer, I'm trying not to kill myself. <laughs> You're writing books. Yeah. Well, now, you kids, don't go out and try that. <laughs> you stay in school. <laughs> Have you always had an interest in coffee tables? Because really, I, I love coffee tables, oh. and, I, and I thought I was the only one. See, the beauty of my book is, if you don't have a coffee table, it turns into a coffee table. <laughs> What? Nothing. It's a card from my dad. What is it? I... Wait. <laughs> Dear son, happy Festivus? What is Festivus? It's nothing. It's nothing. When George was growing Jerry, up, no. his father no. hated all the commercial and religious aspects of Christmas, yeah. so he made up his own holiday. Oh, and another piece of the puzzle falls into place. All right. <laughs> And instead of a tree, didn't your father put up an aluminum pole? Oh, Jerry, no. stop it. And then weren't there feats of strength that always ended up with you crying? I can't take it anymore. I'm going to work. You have me now. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm out of here. Happy Festivus. It's Festivus. When George was growing up, no. his father... Nothing. It's nothing. It's a stupid holiday my father invented. It, it, it doesn't exist. Happy Festivus, Georgie. No! <laughs> Frank invented a holiday? God, he's so prolific. Got your message. I haven't celebrated Festivus in years. What is your interest? Well, just tell me everything, huh? Many Christmases ago, I went to buy a doll for my son. <laughs> I reached for the last one they had, but so did another man. As I rained blows upon him, I realized there had to be another way. What happened to the doll? It was destroyed. But out of that, a new holiday was born. A Festivus for the rest of us. Well, that must have been some kind of doll. She was. <laughs> well, happy Festivus. What is that? Is that the Paul? George, Festivus is your heritage. It's part of who you are. That's why I hate it. Look, it's a big dinner Tuesday night at Frank's house. Everyone's invited. George, you're forgetting how much Festivus has meant to us all. I brought one of the cassette tapes. Read that poem. I can't read it. I need my glasses. You don't need glasses. You're just weak. You're weak. Leave him alone! <laughs> all right, George. It's time for the Festivus Feats of Strength. Oh, no! Turn it off! No Feats of Strength! I Come on. I'm Festivus! The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now, you're gonna hear about it. You, Kruger, my son tells me your company stinks. Oh, God. What? we'll get yours in a minute. Kruger, you couldn't smooth a silk sheet if you had a hot date with a babe. I lost my train of thought. 